particular uh, skills that English graduates need to thrive, to survive and thrive in the 21st century. But these skills, I would like to call some of them assets, are also important for everyone. So anyone listening will probably find some resonance because the skills that I describe will be um, essential to survive as the century proceeds, particularly after the pandemic is over. We are talking of the world, the post-pandemic world. When the pandemic struck us quite unprepared and sent us into bubbles inside our homes, I was hoping that the world would be a kinder, more com compassionate and more decent one. But over the months I am realizing it will be a version of the Darwinian world where the big fish will always eat up the small fish. If the vaccine is available, you will see a run for the vaccine and the richer countries will always get preference over the poorer countries. We will be given leftovers. And this is a world which we do not like. And remember, English graduates or graduates from any subjects will not, not only compete within the country, but also outside the country. Do you know how many Indian super managers work in Bangladesh today? Or South Korean, Sri Lankan, or Pakistani super managers? They rake away $6 billion from our country every year. And any economist will tell you how much our poor laborers earn in the Middle East. This year they are sending more because they are desperate to help their relatives and friends back home. So they will be sending something like 18 to 19 billion dollars or maybe 20. One third of it is being taken away by the super managers into India. This has been going on for the last 10, 15 years. You look for any of the multinational organizations working in this country. And you will find the super managers are all from other countries. So why is it that our graduates cannot compete within our own country with people coming from other countries? It's not that they are door crashing. We are inviting them. I talked to a manager, a very top manager of a, um, a pharmaceutical company. And he told me that in spite of his desire to employ Bangladeshi graduates, he found them lacking in certain skills. And these we shall discuss today. So this is what I tell my students. Your abilities, your skills, your assets have to be continuously cultivated, developed not simply to survive, but also to do something for the country. It is almost like a patriotic duty. Imagine if all these positions could have been filled by Bangladeshi graduates. You'd be saving $6 billion every year. Enough money to build another part of the bridge every year. So that is a sober reference I'm giving to you just to understand the nature of competition waiting for all of you. And after the pandemic is over, many of our resources will be in short supply. And competition will become very sort of, it will be a red race among nations for the scarce resources. And if you are not capable of handling our own businesses, if we have to depend on others to show us the way, then we are looking at a future which is grim and which will not be welcoming. So we should not think too much about the future, which to me now looks almost uncertain. But to have our position, to plant our feet on the, on the, on, on, on the, on, on the ground, so to say, we have to prepare ourselves. So that's the caveat I begin my lecture with. Just to make the ground that what I'm saying is not something theoretical. What I'm saying is derived from long years of practice. And I had the opportunity of teaching in Brack University, a subject which is very far from my own 
um, expertise was in the beginning is called managerial communication. Now it's business English, but Brack University added managerial so that managers own up the communication. And this is basically meant for managers. And I have been talking to all these students over the years. And many of them who listened to me, followed my guidance and suggestion and my advice have really prospered. I still get emails from those graduates living almost in every country in the world. And they are so happy with their lives. Why? Because it's not me only, but other uh, instructors, <laughs> teachers, professors of business faculty of Brack University. Incidentally, Brack University had put together a very competent business plan. So they have given the students a self-realization, not simply the knowledge, but also the expertise to use the knowledge in every situation. They have developed tremendously. So if some students can do, why not everyone? But I'll tell you the problems as we go along. 